Praise the Lord. We give honor to God the Father and His only begotten Son, Jesus the Christ, the Lamb of God who came to save us from our sins. And praise God that He did just that when He was manifest in the flesh and he was crucified on the cross at Calvary that we may all have a right to the tree of life. Praise God. We're going to be coming out of 1 John chapter 2 beginning at verse 4. 1 John chapter 2 and verse 4 the text reads, He that saith, I know him, and keepeth not his commandments is a liar, and the truth is not in him. But whoso keepeth his word in him verily is the love of God perfected. Hereby know we that we are in him. He that saith he abideth in him ought himself also so to walk even as he walked. Brethren, I write no new commandment unto you, but an old commandment, which you had from the beginning. The old commandment is the word which you have heard from the beginning. Again, a new commandment I write unto you, which thing is true in him and in you, because the darkness is past and the true light now shineth. He that saith he's in the light and hateth his brother is in darkness even until now. He that loveth his brother abideth in the light, and there is none occasion of stumbling in him. Praise God. Now, what we see here in the text, and I want to key in on verse 9 and verse 10, and I'm going to read a few other verses beyond that. The Bible says, He that saith he is in the light, and hated this brother is in darkness even until now. Praise God. We see the Apostle John is writing to members of the body of Christ. And he makes it known that there is a lot of people that profess Jesus' name, but yet they have hatred in their heart toward their brother or their sister. Now, it may be hard for a lot of people to believe this, but the truth is there are a lot of people that profess Jesus' name that have hatred in their heart. There are many different Pentecostal, Baptist, Catholic, Hebrew, Israelite, and various other denominations and non-denominations that have hatred in their heart toward other people. We have certain Pentecostal denominations, white denominations, I should say, that have hatred in their heart toward black people. Praise God. There are certain Baptist denominations that also have hatred in their hearts toward black people. Praise God. Even in the Hebrew Israelite, amen, there are many of them, praise God, that have hatred in their heart toward white people. They even go to the point of saying that white people can't be saved. That salvation is only for the Hebrews which is black people, praise God. Now I want you to know that all of these people and even others that I didn't even name are far off. And it doesn't matter how much these people believe that they're saved. It doesn't make a difference how much these people can quote scripture. It doesn't make a difference, praise God, how much of the truth they think they know. The Bible exposes all of these groups and others that I did not name that they are actually in darkness. And these people are not really saved. Praise God. Yes, we even have some dumb-talking church 
churches, and I believe that every true believer should have the Holy Ghost with the evidence of speaking in tongues. Praise God. But we understand this. When you get filled with the Holy Ghost, it does not just come with speaking in tongues, but it also comes with power and also the love of God is shed abroad in your hearts. So when you are truly saved, you have the love of God in your heart, not only to love God with all your heart, soul, and mind, but also to love your neighbor even as yourself. Praise God. So it is the will of God that we love one another. Whether it is the fellow saint in the body of Christ, or even the unbeliever, or we can even say your enemies. Because the Gospel of Matthew, Jesus told his disciples to love your enemies. He said, do good to them that hate you. Pray for them that despitefully use you. Praise God. Hallelujah. And you just can't escape what the Bible says. What the Bible says is true and it will always be true. No matter how many try to wiggle out from this, the word of God will always catch you in a lie. Praise God. Now I'm going to read that one more time in 1 John chapter 1, beginning at verse 9. The scripture says, he that saith he's in the light. In other words, he that declares that he's a child of God. One that says, I'm saved. I'm sanctified. One that says they love God, but yet they hate their brother is, a, is in darkness even until now. Verse 10 says, He that loveth his brother abideth in the light, and there is none occasion of stumbling in him. Praise God. Jesus testified in the Gospel of John that he that walketh in darkness stumbleth and knoweth not whether he goes. Praise God. So don't be fooled by many of these people who can quote scriptures, may even have a slim understanding of certain things that the Bible says, but yet the Bible teaches us in the Gospel of Matthew chapter 7 that you will know them by the fruit that they bear. Praise God. So it's it's good to be a fruit inspector because this will really expose any and everyone whether they are a true child of God or they are a charlatan masquerading as one who has faith in Jesus Christ. Praise God. Now in 1 John chapter 2, the next verse 11 says, but he that hateth his brother is in darkness. Praise God. And walketh in darkness and knoweth not whether he goeth, because that darkness has blinded his eyes. He goes on to say, I write unto you, little children, because your sins are forgiven you for his name's sake. He said, I write unto you, fathers, because you have known him that is from the beginning. And I write unto you, young men, because you have overcome the wicked one. I write unto you, little children, because you have known the Father. Praise God. Then he says, praise God. In verse 14, I have written unto you, fathers, because you have known him that is from the beginning. I have written unto you, young men, because you are strong, and the word of God abideth in you, and you have overcome the wicked one. Praise God. Hallelujah. So that's very important for us to know. Praise God. Now, he that hated his brother is a murderer. You have to understand that. Because hatred is a murdering spirit. Now, Galatians chapter 5 and verse 19 through verse 21 also teaches us that hatred as well as murder is one of the works of the flesh. Now let's read that here because we need to see what the Bible says. It doesn't matter what man says. It doesn't matter what denominational organizations say. It doesn't matter what this apostle and this prophet and this amen uh, individual says. But it does matter what thus saith the Lord. 
And I want to read what the Apostle Paul penned to the church at Galatia. <clears throat> now, I, I can trust in the words of the apostles and the prophets that's in Scripture, but you can hardly put any stock in these latter-day apostles and prophets that are so contrary to what the Bible teach. Listen to what it says in Galatians chapter 5, beginning at verse 19. It says, Now the works of the flesh are manifest, which are these, adultery, fornication, uncleanness, lasciviousness, idolatry, witchcraft, hatred. Praise God. Look at that. The Bible identifies that hatred is one of the works of the flesh. Praise God. <laughs> Excuse me. Let's proceed. It says, in verse 20, it says, idolatry, witchcraft, hatred, variance, emulations, wrath, strife, seditions, heresies. Verse 21 says envies, envies, murders, drunkenness, revelry, and such like of which I tell you before, as I've also told you in times past, that they which do such things shall not inherit the kingdom of God. Now, if you look at verse 21 again, it outlines murders. Praise God. So we see that we see that hatred and murder is two of the works of the flesh that is listed in Galatians chapter 5 verse 19 through 21. And then he further states that they that do such things shall not inherit the kingdom of God. Praise the Lord Almighty. Amen. That says that a lot of people need to get saved. They need to get delivered from the flesh. Praise God. And unless people repent and turn from their wicked ways, they will not be saved in the end when Jesus returns. This is a matter of life and death. A matter of heaven and hell. And this is to be taken serious, praise God. We live in a generation where people have become so religious, they think just because they believe this and they believe that, that preachers can preach, praise God, that that overshadows what the Bible says. But you cannot overshadow what the scriptures determine, praise God, because God makes it very clear through the apostle that they that do such things shall not inherit the kingdom of God. Hallelujah. Now we understand again that hatred and murder are two of the works of the flesh. And I mentioned just a little, a bit ago, that hatred is also a murdering spirit. Praise God. Let's read that in 1 John chapter 3. And we're going to start here at verse 11. 1 John chapter 3 and verse 11 records, For this is the message that you heard from the beginning, that we should love one another. This is what this thing is all about. It's about the love of God. It's about loving one another. Praise God. And in order to love one another, you must possess the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. Now notice that the apostles is writing to saints of God. It's writing to people that have the baptism of the Holy Ghost. Because without the baptism of the Holy Ghost, you are not a part of the body of Christ. You are still on the outside looking in. It doesn't make a difference how much of the Bible you read. You cannot fulfill its contents within your life because you're still operating in the realm of flesh. Praise God. We got to get out of the flesh and we got to get in Christ. We have to allow the Spirit of God to fill us overflowing so that we can begin to operate in power and fulfill the words of God in his righteousness. Praise God. Now I'm going to go ahead and cut and paste and I'm going to read Romans chapter 5 verse 5 and then I'm going to go back to 1 John chapter 3. 
In Romans chapter 5, verse 5, it says, In hope making not ashamed, because the love of God is shed abroad in our hearts by the Holy Ghost, which is given unto us. So we see here that the love of God is imparted within our hearts as one becomes a recipient of the Holy Ghost. Praise God. And we know that the Holy Ghost is simply Christ in you, the hope of glory. Praise God. Now, if we go back over here to 1 John chapter 3, I want to start again in verse 11. I want to read down because I want you to understand what we're trying to communicate to you. Amen. 1 John chapter 3 verse 11 says, For this is the message that you heard from the beginning, that we should love one another. Listen to what the apostle says to the members of the body of Christ. Praise God. And God will never expect us to do something that we did not have the ability to do. Praise God. When you have the Holy Ghost, you have the ability to fulfill the words of God within your own life. Praise God. But the text said that we should love one another. And that word love in the Greek is agape. Agape is the love of God. And we understand, according to Romans chapter 5, verse 5, that the love of God is shed abroad in our hearts by the Holy Ghost that is given unto us. Praise God. Then the text reads in verse 12, Not as Cain, who was of that wicked one, and slew his brother. And wherefore slew he him? Because his own works were evil, and his brother's righteous. He said, marvel not, my brethren, if the world hate you. We know that we have passed from death unto life because we love the brethren. He that loveth not his brother abideth in death. Did you hear that? Anybody that professes Jesus' name, if you have any hatred in your heart toward anybody, it doesn't make a difference what their ethnic group is, what their religious affiliation is, what their economic status is, what their gender is. There is no reason for us to hate anybody. Praise God. The Bible says we're to love one another. Yes, we are to do good unto all men, especially them that are the household of faith. Praise God. Hallelujah. Are you listening to me? The text goes on to tell us here in verse 15, the first John chapter 3. He said, whosoever hated his brother is a murderer. And you know that no murderer has eternal life abiding in him. There you have it. Praise God. Hatred is a murdering spirit. Praise God. And I want you to know that murder is one of the Ten Commandments in Exodus chapter 20 and verse 13. Praise God. So when you have hatred in your heart, praise God, you have broken the commandment of the Lord thy God. He tells you that in Exodus chapter 20 and verse 13. Praise God. He said, thou shalt not kill. Praise God. So there's a lot of murderers in the church. The church is filled with murderers. Praise God. We got a lot of racists in the church. Praise God. I mean a lot of racists. Praise God. There are racists in the United Pentecostal Church. There are racists in the Hebrew Israelite camps. Praise God. There are racists in certain Baptist denominations. There are races in certain Catholic dioceses, praise God. There are races in many other denominations and non-denominational non organizations, praise God. And here's the deception. Many of them think that they are saved. Hallelujah. But I come to tell you what the Bible says. He that hated his brother is a murderer, praise God. Hallelujah. Then the text tells you over in 1 John chapter 2, 11, it says, but he that hated his brother is in darkness and walketh in darkness and knoweth not whether he goeth because that darkness has blinded his eyes. Now that doesn't seem like anybody that's walking in the light. Praise God. And 
Amen. Some, some people may have had it at one time, praise God, but if you yield to that flesh, praise God, you will eventually lose that anointing. You may keep talking in all the leftover tongues, but I come to tell you, you do not have eternal life abiding in you, praise God. And then there are some people talking in tongues that ain't never had the Holy Ghost because those are false tongues that are emanating out of their corrupted spirit, praise God. Because when the Holy Ghost comes to live in you, hallelujah, you will speak in heavenly tongues, but you will also have power over the flesh and God will put his love in your heart to fulfill his law. Matthew chapter 22 verse 36 and 40, Jesus said, Love God with all thy heart, soul, and mind. And the second commandment is like unto it, love thy neighbor as thyself. Romans chapter 13 says, he that loveth his brother has fulfilled the law. Praise God. When you walk in the spirit, you will fulfill the law of God. But when you walk after the flesh, you will break the law of God. And this is why we have so many hateful birds in the church. We have a lot of hateful birds professing to be followers of Jesus Christ. But I come to tell you, that is the lie of the devil. And many people have been deceived. Their eyes have become blinded, praise God. And they think just because they've been in the church for a while, they think, praise God, just because, you know, they got a little knowledge of scripture, that they are okay like they are. But the Bible says something totally on the contrary, praise God. Amen. Revelation chapter 18 says, beginning in verse 1 and 2, he said, and after these things, I saw another angel come down from heaven, having great power, and the earth was lightened with his glory. And he cried mightily with a strong voice, saying, Babylon the great is fallen, is fallen, and is become the habitation of devils, and the hold of every foul spirit, and a cage of every unclean and hateful bird. Praise God. Now I want you to know all these professing Christians today, that have hatred in their heart. Every one of them are still a part of Babylon. They have not been delivered from that matrix system. They are still in Babylon, praise God. Are you listening to me? The whole world at this particular time is in Babylon. Many of them are in Sodom and some of them are in Egypt, praise God. But it's going to take the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ to deliver out of that house of bondage. This is why we preach the gospel. This is why we blow the trumpet and sound the alarm because we want to wake up them that are asleep. We want to shake you. We want to stir you. Praise God. We want to open up your eyes so you can see the truth of God. Amen. Hallelujah to the Lamb of God. Oh, we give God praise in this house. We give God praise in this place. I give God everything in my soul because I know his word is true. Hallelujah. Now, it's a shame here that a lot of our denominational organizations ain't nothing but amen, a cage of every unclean and hateful bird. Praise God. Now, that's sad to say because when the world looks at people who profess Jesus' name, and maybe some of them may not profess Jesus' name, amen, they use the Hebrew Yahshua, but it doesn't matter when the world looks upon them who profess to have salvation, and they see a lot of this wickedness prevailing within the houses of prayer, it makes them believe that God is a fake and the Bible is not true. Praise God. That has been a strategy of the enemy to keep many people from ever finding Jesus Christ. Amen. That they may end up dying and losing their soul. Praise God. Yes, we have a lot of hateful birds in the church. Praise God. There's a lot of hateful birds in the church. But I come to tell you that is not the Holy Ghost. And that is not who Jesus is. 
Praise God. The Bible teaches us in Galatians 5 and 22 that the fruit of the Spirit, look at the very first one it names. He said, is love. Praise God. That's what every believer must possess. Hallelujah. You must possess the love of God. This is what this thing is all about. Walking in love. Doing the Father's will. Pleasing Him in all things. Hallelujah. We are living in a dark world that truly needs to see Jesus Christ. They need to see the love of God. They need to see the joy of the Spirit. They need to see the peace of God that passes all understanding. They need to see who Jesus is and they need to see him through his people. Praise God. Hallelujah. This is what it's all about. It's about the love of God. Now, if we go to 1 John chapter 4, I want to start reading in verse 7. 1 John chapter 4, beginning in verse 7, it says, Beloved, let us love one another, for love is of God. Look at that. Again, that word love in the Greek is speaking of agape, which is the love of God. Again, he says, Beloved, let us love one another. Listen to the commandment of God through his apostle. He says we're to love one another. Then he says, and everyone that loveth is born of God and knoweth God. So right there, that shows you that a lot of people have never been born again. They may profess Jesus Christ, but the text teaches us that many of them have not been truly born of the Spirit as Jesus testified in John chapter 3, verse 1 through 8. Praise God. There are many that have what you call a pseudo experience. In other words, many of them think that they are experiencing salvation, but yet their experience is a lie. They're not really experiencing the power of God. They're experiencing something on the contrary, and yet making them think they are being saved. Praise God. But the text goes on to tell us in 1 John chapter 4 and verse 8, listen to what it says. It says, he that loveth not, knoweth not God, for God is love. In this was manifested the love of God toward us because that God sent his only begotten son into the world that we might live through him. Herein is love. Not that we love God, but that he loved us and sent his son to be the propitiation for our sins. Beloved, if God so loved us, we ought also to love one another. No man has seen God at any time. If we love one another, God dwelleth in us and his love is perfected in us. Hereby know we that we dwell in him, and he in us because he has given us of his spirit. And we have seen and testified that the Father sent the Son to be the Savior of the world. Whosoever shall confess that Jesus is the Son of God, God dwelleth in him, and he in God. And we have known and believed the love that God has to us. God is love, and he that dwelleth in love dwelleth in God, and God in him. Do you see what this thing is about? Praise God. How can anyone profess to be saved? How can anyone profess to love God? How can anyone profess to be filled with the Holy Ghost, but yet they don't demonstrate the love of God? Well, the Bible is exposing a lot of people. It's exposing a lot of people that are in many of the organizations. Praise God. Are you listening to me? Hallelujah. I want you to know that you can depend on God's word. You can trust in the word of God. His word is a sure word of prophecy. Everything that he says will come to pass. Hallelujah. It is impossible for God to tell a lie. And this is why we need to put all of our confidence in what is written in the scriptures for our learning. Let's proceed, praise God. In verse 17 of 1 John chapter 4, he says, Herein is our love made perfect, that we may have boldness in the day of judgment, because as he is, so are we in this world. There is no fear in love, but perfect love casteth out fear, because fear has torment. He that feareth is not made perfect in 
love. We love him because he first loved us. And if a man say, I love God and hated this brother, he is a liar. Did you hear that? Did you hear what the Bible said? Did you hear what the Holy Ghost moved the Apostle John to write? Come on, somebody. We got to see that God is exposing a lot of people. Amen. People are not who they say they are. We have many wolves and sheep's clothing in the house of God. I don't care how good they can preach. I don't care how good they can sing. I don't care how many tithes and offers they put in the bucket. Praise God. When it's all said and done, we got to come back to this word. And this word says, if a man say, I love God and hate his brother, he is a liar. For he that loveth not his brother, who he has seen, how can he love God, whom he has not seen? Praise God. And this is the commandment. Have we from him that he who loveth God love his brother also? Praise God. You just can't get away from that. You can't get away from the word of God. The word of God makes this perfectly clear, praise God. And we got to come to the reality that if our lives are not lining up with scripture, that we are in religious error. Praise God. Some people, they quote the scriptures erroneously, and many of them twist the scriptures to their own destruction. Praise God. This is why Jesus said in the gospel of Mark, praise God, that there are some who know not the scriptures, neither the power of God. Therefore, you do greatly error. And many people are in error, and they are misleading a lot of people. Praise God. This is why I encourage anybody to get back to the word of God. Get back to seeking them in prayer and fasting. Hallelujah. And I come to tell you that if there's any hateful words out there, praise God, and your eyes is beginning to come open, what you need to do is repent, get on your face, and cry out to God for mercy so the blood of Jesus can cleanse you from all unrighteousness. Hallelujah. Praise God, because his word change. God's word says what it says. You need to trust in the word of truth and stop believing in all these fake apostles, these old wicked prophets, these old pitiful pastors, these old egotistical evangelists, and these old sorry teachers out here that are misleading many people in these churches. Praise God. Hallelujah. To God be the glory. For the things that he has done. Praise God. We must love one another. And it takes the Holy Ghost. It takes Christ in you. The hope of glory. In order to fulfill the words of God in your life. Praise God. I want to read another verse of scripture. Coming out of Romans chapter 13. Beginning in verse 8, Romans chapter 13, verse 8 says, Oh, no man, anything but to love one another. Folks, this is who this is who Jesus was. This is what God is about. Matter of fact, the Bible says in 1 John chapter 4 that God is love. Praise God. We must manifest who God is through Jesus Christ within our own respective lives. Praise God. Again, he says, Oh, no man, anything but to love one another. For he that loveth another has fulfilled the law. Look at that. And you have to be in the spirit in order to fulfill the law. Praise God. Then he said, for this thou shalt not commit adultery. Thou shalt not kill. Thou shalt not steal. Thou shalt not bear false witness. Thou shalt not covet. And if there be any other commandment, it is briefly comprehended in this saying, namely, thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. Love working no ill to his neighbor, therefore love is the fulfilling of the law. Praise God. You just can't run from that. You can't run from the word of God. Hallelujah. And I come to tell you that the love of God is one of the indicators whereby you're going to know who the true children of God are. It is, the, it is one of the indicators where you're going to know a true child of God. Because 
again in the Gospel of Matthew chapter 7, he said, by their fruits you shall know them. You will know who a true child of God is from one who is a child of the devil. You will know who a true prophet of God is from one who is a false prophet. Praise God. All you got to do is check the manual. All you have to do is try every spirit by the word of God. All you got to do is put your confidence in what is written and it will expose everything that is not like Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Listen to it again. Praise God. In the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 7, praise God. I'm going to go ahead and read that. The Gospel of Matthew, chapter 7. Beginning in verse 15, he said, Beware of false prophets which come to you in sheep's clothing, but inwardly they are raving in wolves. You shall know them by their fruits. Do men gather grapes of thorns or figs of thistles? Even so, every good tree bringeth forth good fruit. And the love of God is one of those good fruits. He said, but a corrupt tree bringeth forth evil fruit. A good tree cannot bring forth evil fruit, neither can a corrupt tree bring forth good fruit. Every tree that bringeth not forth good fruit is hewn down and cast into the fire. Wherefore, by their fruits, you shall know them. Praise God. Yes, my brothers and sisters, you can know the truth. You don't have to be in the dark. You can know the truth, praise God. Hallelujah. Amen. Again, the love of God is one of the indicators whereby you can know who a true child of God is. Listen to the Gospel of John, chapter 13. It says, a new commandment I have given unto you. Uh, this is coming out of verse 34 and verse 35. The Gospel of John, chapter 13, verse 34 and 35. He says, a new commandment I give unto you, that you love one another, as I have loved you, that you also love one another. By this all men know that you are my disciples, if you have loved one to another. So here we see, this is one of the indicators whereby you can know a true child of God from a child of the devil. There's a lot of people that's professing to be saved. They profess it to love God. They profess it to have a relationship with God. But the Bible says other words. Praise God. Titus chapter 1 and verse 16 says it like this. Titus chapter 1 verse 16 says they profess that they know God. But in works they deny him. How do they deny him? Being abominable and disobedient and to every good work reprobate. Praise God. So we see here that hatred or murder... Amen. Is one of the works that people display that actually deny Jesus Christ. Because when you walk after the flesh, you are denying Christ because you are rejecting God in his word to fulfill the lust of your own flesh. Praise God. Hallelujah. I just want to give God the praise for this, this insight on tonight. And may God impart his truth within your spirit, man, and enlighten you in your mind concerning the things of the spirit of God. May God bless you and may Jesus be glorified in you.